Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Jeanette McCune, who serves as Senior Director of School and Community Programs at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Jeanette, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Erin. I'm so excited to be able to talk with you today. Oh, well, I am so excited to talk to you. Obviously, the Kennedy Center is one of our wonderful partners, creative partner for the show. And, you know, I've had the joy of being able to partner in so many ways through Sphinx and other things with the Kennedy Center. And so there's just so much extraordinary work taking place. Um, and one of the things that I thought would be great just to start off, because, you know, there's so many uh, who watch our show who have different roles at organizations, large and small. And so I thought if you could just kind of share what does a senior director of school and community programs at the Kennedy Center do? What is the scope of that work that you're doing? Sure. Oh, I have such a wonderful job because it is so undefined. But primarily, my primary focus is supporting partnerships in school and community settings. So really focusing on K-12, kindergarten through grade 12 arts education programs. How do we support arts education as a civil right for young people? And we do that through a variety of, of methods. Um, we do have partnerships that focus on supporting teacher capacity building and professional development. We focus on collective impact. So how does a larger con con uh, convening of humans, not only school districts and arts organizations and cities and governments, but how does the media community, how do the impacted individuals themselves, students and their parents, how do other business community, higher education, how do they all come from collectively together? to positively impact arts education and make it a priority within a community. So that's part of our work. And then on a local level, we're deeply, deeply engaged in working collaboratively with schools. Um, we support arts education connections. I call it the bridge between the community itself. So in school settings, as well as bringing our young people to performances, events, and experiences at the Kennedy Center. So, so many amazing experiences, but we really focus on how do we support arts education as a civil right for young people? And what is our responsibility as cultural, uh, cultural purveyors and creators to help support that vision? So I love how you just, first of all, amazing work and incredible breadth to your role. Um, but also I just love how you kind of describe that in role and importance of, of arts education. Um, and one of the things I thought before I kind of get in, I wanna to touch a little on, on arts and health and those types of things. But just before that, there are so many who watch the show who are invested in arts education and who do arts education in some way, shape or form related to their roles. And so what I was wondering is maybe kind of a two part, but one part of just um, if if someone out there is asking you, why is arts education important, right? What is that kind of crux that you say of why it is a civil right, if you will, um, and, and, and is so important? Um, so kind of the why of arts education, and then kind of coupled with that, as you look at the breadth of work and programs that you oversee, are there any core outcomes, um, goals that you are like, you know what, if we achieve this, we will have done a good job. And so just kind of wondering those two things that I'm sure and many people in our audience are curious. Yeah, just taking a step back, think of your own education. I ask people to think of their own education growing up. And one of the things I think is that really stands out is when you had an opportunity to go to school, Hopefully you had an opportunity to tap into the very uh, immense number of intelligences you have, as well as interests that you have. Um, and I speak of it as a civil right because arts education as part of a well-rounded curriculum includes that students have an opportunity to create on their own. They have an opportunity to create collectively. They have an opportunity to reflect, have interpersonal engagement, and find things about themselves that they might not know that they do well. That in of itself, provides value from my experience. And I will say as a, someone who grew up in public education and whose family did not have a significant amount of means, 
arts education wouldn't have been introduced to me had I not uh, had it available to me in public school. And I think that's had a huge impact on me, certainly as a professional now, seeing the differences that exist from environment to environment, zip code to zip code, zip city to city, that if there is not consistency in the delivery of a well-rounded curriculum that is inclusive of the arts, we're missing out on so many opportunities for young people to figure out who they are, how that identifies who they are, and also how to find the joy and the beauty in their everyday life that an arts education provides. So being part of a, a great citizen, part of being a great person that just has an opportunity to really know themselves and to see each other in a new and an enlightening way, arts education, I deeply believe, addresses that. And I feel that public education is where we have to start with that particular work. Absolutely. No, it is so incredibly awesome and, and so important. And as, you know, any of the, you know, uh, audience that we have, uh, other partners of the show, as they think about it and they kind of construct programs and then have measures, measurable mm -hmm. outcomes or goals, things like that. Anything that you would suggest that they consider or have as kind of here are some key things that you should really be measuring to see, gauge the impact you're having, anything like that? Yes, I would say the first thing is to always communicate with those you're going to be working with and what they want to see as a result of the program. That may seem like a simple thing, but oftentimes, whether we mean to or not, sometimes we think about it from our own perspective uh, as a cultural organization or as a school, but the, the lived experience, the human beings that are being impacted by the work should be ha should have some input into what they see as successful. Um, and so what uh, the things that we typically are really mindful of is what is the level of engagement? Is the person that is impact and paying uh, engaging in the program, are they are they enlivened? Are they activated? Are they connecting? So we look for outcomes associated with engagement. We look for outcomes associated with joy. That may seem, I, I, joy is a very important word to me. Um, in, in being involved in art, in the arts, there should be joy. So are we seeing laughter? Are we seeing joy? Are we seeing even layers of emotions that aren't necessarily in those ways, but help us with that emp empathy and that way of connecting with others? Um, obviously, we want to look at how does the design of our program align with what our intended outcomes are? So if we believe that if we're investing in um, greater participation, how are we measuring what that participation looks like? Um, are students coming to school more? Are they engaging? Are they having less issues concerning their participation and being able to be engaged in classroom activities? Um, are we looking at growth in the art form or growth in other content areas? So again, the design outcomes should be very much designed to the design input. And how are we looking at what are the intended outcomes and how does the design and the implementation of our program help us to achieve it? But nothing without us. Uh, we never try to design any programming without including the voice of those who are impacted by it. Yeah, no, it's just, I think, such an important philosophy that drives uh, uh, everything that, that you're doing, which I think is so important. The um, There are many in, in our community, in the nation today, who, who really feel like we are in a mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of people talk about the role that the arts can play in well-being and especially in mental health. And just wondering if that is cutting across your work and how you view that and think about that role that the arts can play specifically relating to mental health. Oh, absolutely. It's, I have some personal some personal connections to it, as well as simply an understanding of it. Um, but I actually have a young a child who is now a teenager who is a young person with a disability. And the way that young person's disability manifests does result oftentimes in some degrees of depression and anxiety. And one of the um, therapeutic modalities that has been incredibly powerful for my young person has been music therapy, both the process of listening and the process of performing. And I'm so grateful that music therapy and the other um, artistic forms of therapy, drama therapy, hip hop therapy, um, visual art therapy, those are all now being recognized in, in an even greater way in terms of their potential impact and their ability to really connect, um, again, those abilities to begin to heal. Um, I also think it's incredibly important to think about the, the power of community in artistic experiences, even if it's not necessarily therapy, but being involved as an audience, connecting with other people around you, and having this shared experience of being involved in the arts. Um, seeing a dramatic interpretation or a musical um, exploration 
and then being able to share that experience with others, how it made you feel, um, having that group shared experience of being empathic in that space is incredibly powerful. So to me, it's inherent actually simply in the act of being involved in making and engaging with art, but then there are also those modalities specifically approaching how to support someone um, that may need some, some guidance and engagement around mental health supports and those therapeutic modalities are incredible. Wow, oh, it's just absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, we are just about out of time, but I always like to ask of all I guess, you know, this work and especially being in administrative leadership in our field, um, there's got to be some challenging days, days when things don't go necessarily totally right. Um, and just wondering, as an administrator, are there solutions or mechanisms, tools that you work for you that you might recommend to others or those who might be watching? Well, I think it's incredibly important to find your people, find your network of individuals with whom you can bounce information off of, that you can talk with, who can provide recommendations to you about what to read, what to watch, who else to connect with. I can't say enough about how isolating this work can be, even though we are involved in the arts, which does connect people. But when you go behind the scenes to do the work on your own, Sometimes you can feel that you have a lot of responsibilities and things that you have to do without the input and engagement of others. And I encourage folks to resist that. Please reach out to others. Please be humble. Please share your experience and, and um, share that with others because through that, we'll become a more powerful uh, set of leaders in this arts work. Um, resist that urge to try to be everything by yourself and know that you're so much stronger by connecting with others. Jeanette McCune, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you, Erin, for having me. It was my complete pleasure, and I can't wait to connect with you and others in this community again. Thank you.